Welcome to Face the Facts. I am Nick Face. This is the post-game show after the Super Bowl. We're all excited here. The Patriots just got their Super Bowl 51 uh, championship, fresh off of a parade for some of us and yep. all. Again, I'm Nick Face. Sitting to my right this evening, we have two newcomers to Face the Facts. We have Mike Sinella, who's sitting right next to us in the red. How you doing, Mike? Doing well. Very excited to be here. I am, too. And Liam Dwyer, right on to his right. Yep. We specifically, well, I specifically wanted to have Liam and Mike both on the show here tonight because they're two of our, our newest members of Sports Zone. so I mm -hmm. wanted to first welcome them to that. But I also wanted to bring them on because these are two guys who kept the faith. That's a slogan that the Red Sox had from 2013. It kind of just kept on going after that. These guys both, throughout the game, just said, Keep, just believe, basically. And we're going to talk a little bit about... Um, how, we, how they kept on feeling, even at 28-3, the Patriots would come back and get a win. I'm still shocked, in case you know. I just can't believe that happened. We also want to talk about what the word greatest means. We saw so many special things from the Super Bowl on, on Sunday night with Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, catches, all sorts oh, of things sure. happen. Records broken. We'll talk about that. Then we want to look at the future here a little bit. We want to think about... What's going to happen next year, a little bit down the road? Because obviously we know Brady will be playing in his year 40 season for 2017. Coach Belichick's going to be 65 years old as well. So hopefully this rain doesn't end. Hopefully mm -hmm. the rain continues so we can um, hopefully be able to see some more Super Bowl championships, which would be awesome. Unreal. So let's start at the top. When we did face the facts from the last time we were with you, we talked about how the Patriots are going to be playing the Falcons. I had a score prediction. I said it was going to be 38-14. Mm -hmm. I was correct that it was in the 30s, but boy, oh boy, was it not 14 <laughs> from the Falcons. Yeah. So let's talk about how we were feeling before the Super Bowl came. Fans and viewers know about how I felt. Let's hear how you felt before it all began. Well, going into the game, you know, I think the consensus was around New England – I, big Patriots win. That's yep. that's what I feel like most people would, were thinking. Yep. And I, I did too, I'm not going to lie. But, you know, I said whatever happened, I'm going to have faith the whole game. Okay. I'd say that around, around New England, Atlanta was heavily underestimated. I think because Atlanta is not, really, not nearly comparable to Boston. As a sports yep. town, they only have one championship. Yep. Out of the four major sports. Where, when, when did they win a championship? Who got it? It was the 90s. The Braves won. Yeah. Oh, that's right. How can I forget the Braves? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Okay. And compared to Boston, I believe we have somewhere around 36 or something, somewhere around that. Yeah. So I think people just didn't really know what to expect from Atlanta, a city like that that's not really on the, on the radar of sports mm -hmm. like New York or Boston or teams like that. Looking at Atlanta... That's a team that has Matt Ryan as their quarterback. They had a, the best offense mm -hmm. in the NFL, which was led by Julio Jones, Devontae Freeman, Tevin Coleman, uh, Mohamed Sanu. Yep. Those guys right there. They did a great job. Mm -hmm. But I think what we saw in this game is the definition of what it means to be clutch. We'll talk about mm -hmm. Tom Brady and his performance, but what a colossal choke that yeah, was sure. for the Atlanta Falcons. Mm -hmm. Colossal. Yeah. You can be great in the regular season, which is exactly what Atlanta proved. Yeah. They, won their, they won a great game against Green Bay. All the credit in the world for doing that. I personally thought it was going to be Green Bay and Patriots. So did I. That's what I thought was going to happen. Yeah. But leading into the game, from what I had expected, I expected that the Patriots' defense would be able to shut down mm -hmm. the Falcons' offense. Yeah, for sure. On certain ends, they did. Yeah. Julio Jones had pretty much one amazing catch. Mm -hmm. That's it. His little sideline yeah, grab. He had of two it. on that. Two, two like, toe-touch catches. Two toe-touch yeah. catches, basically. So, yes, talent was there, yeah. but he got completely shut down. Mm -hmm. Shut yeah. down. The running game, I thought Freeman yeah. was probably their biggest test for the season so yeah. far. Yeah, for sure. Le'Veon Bell may have been a test for them back when they had the Steelers, but he got hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that as a team for Atlanta, what surprised me the most was their offensive line. Mm -hmm. 
and their defense. Yeah. Yeah. That at the beginning stages of the game, first half and all, they completely shut down the Patriots. Yeah. So let's talk about now the game itself. Yep. Everybody knows who got a chance to watch it. Atlanta came out guns blazing. Mm-hmm. The Patriots, they, were, they got the coin toss. They started the ball, opening drive. Didn't, they were four and out, done. Yep. Atlanta gets it, and again, they go back and forth. They were playing basically a seesaw match yeah. until it got to the second quarter, and that's mm-hmm. when the eruption began. Blew up. How would you guys, I guess, grade how Atlanta did in that first half? Um, well, in the first half, obviously, I think going back to one of the prior points you brought up was – how we were surprised by their defense. Mm -hmm. And I think that not a lot of people looked into the fact that, I guess they had let up a lot of their defensive points late in games after being carried by that top offense. They would say, okay, if we're up 34 to seven, we don't mind losing this game 34 to 21 if we can get out healthy. And so I think that based on that, and they came out firing and stuff, but I I think they came out a little bit better than expected. I give them a B, B plus. I think I'm gonna. I'd gotta have to go with probably a an A minus. I was yeah. surprised, specifically by their defensive line. Tom Brady was under pressure. Yep. All all day in the first half, we saw him missing throws, which I think was obviously, you know, a result of how under pressure he was. I forget, their defensive tackle. I forget what his name was. Had I think three sacks in the game and had three sacks all year. Was that um, Dwight Freeney? It wasn't Dwight. It was, wasn't Dwight Freeney. Dwight Freeney was getting pressure too. I was surprised. He had a great first half. He really did. And I then was, after that, he just, they just tailed. I was surprised. I heard the name Dwight Freeney and I was like, uh, Dwight Freeney still I didn't around? Know yeah, I, 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 I was surprised too. Coach. I didn't know that he was. I didn't know where there. he was. <laughs> nope, I didn't either. Still just a pass pass rusher. He jumped off sides on the uh, on the two point conversion, which yep. was kind of scary. I was like, oh, yeah. flag down. And yeah. I was like, I'm pretty sure. Dwight Freeney jumped, but you never when know. When that flag when happened on that two-point, I'm like, oh, is this against us? Yeah. Against Atlanta? when you and see the line that jumps, moment. you never know if it's the offense that no. like twitched a little a bit because they call for the littlest yep. things. You're right. I personally give Atlanta an A for that first half. Yeah. They came out. They silenced their critics. Yeah. That was their Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. They basically had the Patriots exactly where they wanted them. Yeah. Patriots got completely shut out. That, it was a, an unbelievable job for them. I was yeah. in a state of shock. Yeah. I didn't think that was going to happen. And at that stage, before Lady Gaga jumped off the roof, <laughs> I, I was yeah. just a, completely in a state of shock. I was, yeah. I was mad. I was trying to figure out what the heck happened. What I was most mad about yeah. was the play calling from the Patriots. Mm-hmm. What in the heck was Josh McDaniels doing? It was brutal. The play calls was brutal. Blunt was terrible. Blunt he was... had been terrible for over a month. Mm-hmm. He wasn't doing yeah. anything. You also had a couple different situations where Martellus Bennett was lining up to get the ball at the end of yeah. that. They had that weird first half. flip play. To it was him, a but... flip play to him. <clears throat> Here's a guy who doesn't even have an ankle, basically. Yeah. Two hundred seventy-five pound guy. And, and going yeah. for that call, I yeah. just I didn't agree with it. I didn't there was, agree. There was the trick play with uh, Edelman through it. Yep. I didn't like that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like that either. Tried it once already, it was good. So my question here is, what was McDaniels trying to do? I mean, I I think he was – I think he went into the game thinking he was going to have an easier time than he did. So I think he was trying to – I think he got a little bit flustered. Okay. And so, for example, with the Edelman pass, I don't think that they planned on using that. I think they thought they were going to be a lot better than they were. I mean, that we have seen in these playoff games, they do like to bring out their bag of tricks. Yeah. For sure. We saw, was it during the Steelers game? Didn't they have a flea flicker? Mm-hmm. They had yep. a flea yeah, Deion yeah. Lewis, yep. Yep, they had one of those. Flipped it back. So the bag of tricks is always good to use, but I thought that was a little bit of a desperation move yeah, right I there think at that sure. point. He realized that he was in trouble, so he was chasing the big play momentum yeah. swing yep. type, of, type of game-changing play. Yep. I thought the same there, too. So looking at that first half again, that was Atlanta the entire entire time of that half. The Patriots mm-hmm. didn't do really anything good. Anything. Mm-hmm. Halftime comes. Yes, Gaga performed. I didn't watch. <laughs> uh, except for when she jumped off of a roof, which was pretty cool. 
I think what we saw at halftime was why the Patriots are such a dominant organization, mm-hmm. why they're a dynasty, why they're the best, mm-hmm. why they're the greatest. To make the adjustments that they did at the halftime to be able to come back, win that game, is truly remarkable. Mm-hmm. So my question here is, the adjustments that were made, who do you think was the leader of making all those moves happen? Who do you think was the one that really put their foot down and said, we need to make the adjustments and rallied everybody together? I, I think it had to have been the ringleader, Belichick. Okay. I really do. I think Brady m- might have helped him too, a little bit of help from McDaniels. Yep. But overall, I think Belichick was the one that said, hey, listen, we got to get James White in this game. Yep. Obviously, the LeGarrette Blunt thing's not working. They're running a one high. Yep. Stuff did in the did middle. Blunt get any action in the second half? After the fumble, they they kind of they sat him down pretty pretty sternly. I don't think they used him at all. Yeah. I, I watched it, rewatched it once, yeah. and I didn't look at that. But I don't think they used him. Yeah. I don't remember. Belichick doesn't like much fumbles. Deion there. Lewis didn't do much of anything either. Mm-mm. We anything. saw him go down, too. We saw him go end. down yeah. hard, yeah. and luckily his knee is okay. Yeah, but I thought that he had another he ACL. That, it, it twitched. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, I thought for sure. It did not sure. look pretty good on that play. Yeah. Um, so the second half comes. Atlanta gets the ball to start. Mm-hmm. What was the score at halftime? Was that 21-3? I want to say 21-3. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Atlanta goes, and they score again. Mm-hmm. 28-3 yeah. was yeah. the score. That was my point where I said, flag on the play, I- I'm done. Yeah. There's no way that they're going to come back. They kept showing that stat during the game that the, high, that the most points come back from anybody in a Super Bowl game, the highest points were 10. Yeah. 10 points was yeah. the, was the uh, highest deficit. That was yeah. the word I was looking for. So I said, yeah, you know, Tom Brady is the greatest and all, but I just don't think it's in the cards this year. They didn't mm-hmm. show up. I kind of accepted it. Yeah. I kind of said, you know what? He didn't win it this year. He's going to get back next year, going to be even more motivated than ever to you know, show Goodell that he can get that trophy and make his day and life miserable. Atlanta gets the ball again. They have great plays. I guess I think that was the Julio Jones setup. Yeah. Julio Jones yeah. had his little toe tag yeah. to, uh, matchup with the line. <clears throat> They're already in field goal range. Yep. All they had to do was run the ball, yep. set it up, and put it through the uprights. Yeah. Why did Kyle Shanahan, the offensive coordinator, elect to go third and 33 for a pass where Matt Ryan gets sacked and the Patriots get the ball? Why? I, I really... I don't know the answer, I, so I, if I don't, any of you want to I'm guess, not sure ahead. I know the answer either because I can't see him having that much doubt in his kicker, Matt Bryant. Seeing they're they're yeah, in they're kicker. inside yeah. and he's been money for the past even two. He's one of the best kickers so. in, yeah. in, in the game. Adam on my fantasy team is yeah, good kicker. What would what did you think about that? I have no clue. Devonta Freeman, at least for most of the first half, he had been getting a lot of space. Yeah, running the football and he's a quick, shifty, shorter back when he's getting space. It looked space, to me like, like that was the hardest thing for the Patriots to defend. Yeah, or for, uh, for player wise. Yeah, Devonte Freeman was somebody the Patriots couldn't match up well with. Oh, yeah. he was and they nightmare. didn't even use him. Yeah, didn't use him the second half. Yeah, the first half they had. I think he got a thirty-something yard run on a toss, and they were so confident in him they ran this same exact play. Yeah. the next play they toss it to him again. Yeah. So I don't know. I think looking back at this game from everything, that is right there. What I think I'm most shocked about mm-hmm. is how Atlanta had that game. All they needed to do was kick a field goal. Yeah, and that game is basically won. Yeah, for and sure. they didn't. Coming in on that sack was a player that we're going to talk about. Um, talking about when we hit the free agency points is Dante Hightower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Came in for that unbelievable sack. And then Allen Branch fell on it. Just and Allen Branch falls on it, gets the ball, Patriots, then get right back into it. It then becomes, I believe, 28 to 9. Mm-hmm. Gostowski missed the kick. Yeah. Now, <laughs> yes, we did score. Yeah. But here I am again. I'm like, ah. Oh, Missed the kick, just not yeah. in it again. Yeah. So that was two times that I said that. Two times. Yeah. What was the next play after that? Was that the onside? I think it onside's was. Might have, the onside kick was the one where the field goal. That was when the field goal came. Yeah, that's when they had the. Oh, so that, that was before then? Yep. Yeah. Um, 
I think the next pair, the next set was just a quick four and out by Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. After that, Brady was able to connect with I think it was Dion. No, not uh, James White. Yeah. James White mm-hmm. was the next one. That's yeah. what set it up as uh, nine plus. Uh, what do we got? It was 16. that was. The, did we go for two points on the, the next one? I think we did. We went for two points. Yep. To uh, the the fake snap, the fake the high snap. Yeah, the fake that high fooled snap. Me. I thought I was like yeah. going on high snap. That did that did fool me too. They used to run that a lot back yeah. in the day. Yeah. A couple of, get even a couple of years. So James White was able to go in on that for two points right there, uh, which was completely awesome. And then again, Atlanta just couldn't get things cooking. Mm-hmm. The next play, the next drive was Brady connecting with Amendola. Yeah. And Amendola gets that touchdown. Yeah, now we're out. at uh, 28-26. I believe that's what it was 26. right now. Something like that. Yeah. And actually, it was Amendola first, then James White. Yeah. So Amendola scored that touchdown to make it um, back when it was 28-12 at the time or yeah. whatever it was. Amendola set up the next drive. Yeah. Then it was James White. Yeah. And, and then the- Amendola got the two-point conversion. Yeah. That's the one that I was... Scared about the most. Oh yeah, because yeah. he was just <clears throat> in, just, just barely broke just that plane. Just barely broke that plane. And I was saying when they were down by two touchdowns, and I knew they needed two touchdowns and two two point conversions. I said, I said aloud, I was like, "There's nothing worse than getting the game tying touchdown, but then having a two point conversion and missing it." It's like well, that, that, that's what I think a then... lot of people in New England aren't talking about enough. The high tower play was crucial, absolutely. Yeah. But to get a two-point conversion in the NFL and to do it twice successfully, yeah. that's almost near impossible. Yeah. Oh, they made and the look Patriots easy. made it happen. Yeah. Look easy. Look easy. Yeah. Atlanta didn't even know what was coming. They could have put a wall up, yeah. and they still would have got in. Yeah. How the heck is that possible? Just how? How were they able to do that? I mean, obviously McDaniels came around with some better play calling, two-point conversions, Holy and they crap. executed. I mean, that screen pass... At, uh, to Amendola was just, I mean, that's a risky play. Uh-huh. And they, they set it up and ran it effectively. Well, the other risky thing here is, where is Danny Amendola in the regular season? Yeah. I mean, what is he doing? Talking about that today, actually. Yeah. He goes to the playoffs, and he, he performs on the biggest stage. Mm-hmm. If you look back from 2014, he did the same thing. Mm-hmm. In the Super Bowl and in the game that led up to the Super Bowl, I forget who we played at that point. Oh, it was um, the Colts. Mm-hmm. Colts. Yeah. Yep. That's Colts when we out. had Edelman doing his catch and everything, yeah. and Amendola caught. He shows up at the biggest stage. So there's another one who's going to be a free agent. Yeah. What do you do on somebody like that? Yeah. And we'll talk about that as we continue to go on here. But that was two plays with Amendola where you look at it and just say, now you believe. Yeah. As soon as that Amendola catch was made, you look at it and say, you know what? They're going to come back and do this. That's how I looked at it as. Yeah. I know you've never had a doubt. So. <laughs> never. So that right, there, right th- that right there to me was one of the crucial plays from there from the game. So now with the score 28-28, yeah. I think everybody knew, even with the amount of time Atlanta had on the clock, there was no way they were going to even get near a field goal. Mm-hmm. So out comes the first overtime in Super Bowl history. Yep. Yeah. Exciting. I don't think there's one person in New England who is a pan, fan of the Patriots would say to themselves that the Patriots weren't going to win that contest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there was absolutely mm-hmm. no way, no doubt that that was going to happen. No doubt. So the Patriots win that coin toss thanks to Matthew Slater and crew. Yeah. And Brady comes out, and boy, was he poised. Yep. He was ready to rock, delivered that ball right down the field, and James White gets that ball mm-hmm. and gets that touchdown. Yep. How were you feeling at that stage? Patriots are Super Bowl champions. Oh, at that stage, I mean. How did that just, feel? I just I went nuts, yep. and obviously everyone did, but mm-hmm. I was believing the entire game, yep. and it just it made it feel even better. Yep. And obviously, we know Brady's mom yep. mm-hmm. is sick, and you know I just felt real good for him. I was just real happy for him. Mm-hmm. Yep. Do you have I a was different throughout opinion? the game. I was I was scared, but in the back of my mind, as a Patriots fan. I feel like everything usually kind of works out for us. Mm-hmm. So I was confident. I was like, you know what, the Patriots got, we have Tom Brady. At the end of the day, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick. I'll take those two against any team, no matter what mm-hmm. the deficit was. So when they scored that last touchdown, at first I was like, was, was he in? Like, yeah, everyone's right. going on the field. We don't, like, do we know confirmed if he was yep. in or not? I could, because the replay was a little shaky. Mm-hmm. I picked my cousin up, lifted him up, almost threw, his head almost hit the roof. Yep. Hugged my dad. Yep. Hugged my, uh, one of my friends I was with. And... 
probably one of the more happier moments I've had great moment. my whole life. Do you guys remember when the Red Sox won in 04? I know you were real little from that point. I, I, I got to say, I, I really no. don't. No. Not, youngest, vivid, the not vividly, at least. The championship I remember was the Celtics when okay. they beat the Lakers. Yep. I was, now I have to show my age. <laughs> I just don't like that. Um, I was 14. And I remember it was like 12.30 in the morning when they won against the Cardinals for 04. And I thought that was such a sweet moment. But I thought, I thought about it after this game. And I said to myself, I was kind of too young to really understand what it meant to kind of win mm-hmm. at that point. I loved the Red Sox and all. I thought it was awesome to see them win for the first time in 86 years. But this one, to me, as much of a baseball fan I am, because that's the Red Sox are near and dear for me, I, I, this, this one, I think this one takes the cake for me. Yeah. And I think that it's because everybody felt the same way about how Brady was wrongfully punished, yep. how everybody was out to get the Patriots. They wanted to take away something that was ours. They were all jealous of Tom Brady, Belichick, and everybody. Yep. It was like someone stuck the finger right in your face, yep. oh, yeah. and you just wanted to go out and prove them wrong. This one, to me, as Belichick said, uh, excuse me, as Robert Kraft said, yep. this one is the sweetest. Yeah inequivocally the sweetest is exactly mm-hmm. the words that he said. I completely agree with what Robert Kraft said. Mm-hmm. It meant a lot to get 2004's world championship. It was pretty sweet to see the Patriots from 01, mm-hmm. at least when Vermont and I was yeah. there. But again, I was only 11 at the time. I think with all the circumstances surrounding this team, with how many people absolutely hated the Patriots, this was a chance for New England to shut up the rest of the world yeah. and tell them all to go fly a kite yeah. and jump on the bandwagon because the Patriots are a force to be reckoned with and you're not going to stop us. Yeah. That was such a – it's almost like a sigh of relief to me that Brady getting punished, having to serve his penalty, and coming out of that for this season victorious as a champion – God, does that feel sweet. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. just so sweet. Yeah. So looking at the game, we saw a lot of greatest things. Mm-hmm. We saw Brady's pretty much – actually, why am I even saying pretty much? He is the greatest <laughs> quarterback of all time. Yep. Five. I kind of did that so that way we can talk about yeah. it. There's no more debate, right? <laughs> no debate. That's okay. cement. It's okay. <laughs> it is cemented. Goat yeah. status, 100%. Take it to the grave. Yep. Okay. Belichick. What does – is he in the same goat category, or is he a cow still, or something? I I think he's I think he's joke. he might be into the goat category mm-hmm. after okay. that one. Okay. Because I mean, all these Super Bowls he's coached, and you see all these regular season stats too, playoff stats. Yeah. They're unbelievable. Yep. And all the Super Bowls that he's been in have been some really demanding Super Bowls that, from a yep. coaching standpoint, with yep. the stress and the. Being on your feet with these switches and everything, yeah. all the halftime. Every Super Bowl they've been in, it's been the same way. They always got to... That's why Vegas had it at three points. Yeah. Yes, they lost it because it was a four-point deficit yeah. of defeat or whatever yeah. it is. Six, yeah. excuse me. Six. Um, but yeah, from there, this was the most uh, victory uh, point margin. Mm-hmm. Which is crazy. Which yeah. is ridiculous. See, it was less I than think a before touchdown. that, the four Super Bowls that they had won, I think it was combined 12-point yeah. uh, victory margin. Yeah, for all four. The next thing. Did we witness the greatest catch ever in football history? Mm-hmm. Did we witness that? In case none people forget, Julian Edelman made one of the most unreal catches that I think I've ever seen in my life. I think personally, Super Bowl history at least. Yeah. Because, I mean... Obviously, I've seen a short term of yeah. the whole NFL, but yeah. in the yeah. Super Bowls that I've seen yeah. in the 2000s, does this think, wipe out David Tyree? I think from it does. The Giants? I think it That's really That's basically does. the major thing I want to look yeah. at. For Forget sure. about the Giants. Yeah. Just go away. I was rattled. They showed the David Tyree yeah. highlight during the Super Bowl. I'm yeah. like, what are you? What are you doing? Why are yeah. you showing the David yeah. Tyree highlight? Yeah. I literally was crying yeah. when they lost that Super Bowl after yeah. the David Tyree catch. Yeah. I mean. The thing about Edelman's catch that was just so much better than Tyree's. I know Tyree had that great, you helmet. Know, it was on the putting helmet. it on the helmet. He hit the and helmet stuff. and he caught it. Yep, because Welker had it in his hands. Yeah, and then. Yep, 
and I was I actually read something and it was saying how every time we look at this catch, we're gonna be looking for it to hit the ground. Yeah. How didn't that hit the ground? Yeah. And like you know, I, Goodell wanted it to hit the ground. I've watched it 15, 20 times by now. Never touched the ground. Never. And it was just through three defenders, couple legs, yeah. lets go of it, and then catches it. Yeah. And yeah. I heard it him uh, mic'd up actually, Edelman, and he was sure he caught it yeah. the yeah. whole time. He, he, he it was, yelled at it. He's like, I caught yeah. it, I caught it, I caught it. I didn't think he caught it. I saw the ball. I was like, oh, like. I didn't think he to, caught it. That had to have touched the ground because like you yeah. see that part where the ball is literally moving down and there's no hands or anything. Was, I'm like, oh, that's. Well, he was on around. Jimmy Fallon on, I think it was Monday night Mo after yeah, everything it was, was, it was won Monday. there. And he talked about how they wanted to go quickly. Yeah. I forget what they say it is. It's a specific call that they do. Mm -hmm. He said he went to Brady and he said he had to he had to call something to make sure they couldn't review it and go quick. Yeah. To, yeah. Some uh, sort of hurry up. Some yeah. sort of a hurry up it is. But he thought he had caught it. He yeah. wasn't a hundred percent sure. Yeah. But he said that he wanted to move it along so they yeah. had no chance of having that opportunity to yeah. review it and maybe go the other way. Yeah. I think Julian Edelman also kind of supplemented his status here for the Patriots mm -hmm. as well. I mean, that was one of the most clutch plays yeah. that's ever been there. Yeah. Sticking with clutch, <laughs> now it's time to talk about Brady. Yeah. Our, I think we, we can safely say, at least for our generation, that we've witnessed the greatest athlete mm -hmm. that's ever played in a professional sport. Yeah. Now, of course, there can be a debate, Michael Jordan... Tom Brady, Ted Williams, all, all those guys. The list yeah. goes on and on and on and on and on. Does Tom Brady qualify to be said as one of the greatest professional athletes that has ever played a game? I think so. Okay. And going back to the Jordan-Brady debate, I think that Tom winning five Super Bowls is far more impressive than Jordan winning six NBA championships. Okay. Because you see it, I know the league was a little different back then, but mm -hmm. you see it in the NBA. You can have one dominant player. Yeah. And the Bulls, you know that they had a very, very good chance of winning it. Correct. But the Pats, we know they're going to make it to the Super Bowl. Yep. But as we were saying earlier, they always have close games. We're not sure of it. Yeah. You, you need to win as a team. I think that's right. what you're yeah. trying to say. Yeah, yeah. That You definitely have to win as a team. You cannot win with one player. Yeah. One player does not make the difference in football. Yeah. It just does not. Mm -hmm. Basketball, it does. Yeah. So I agree on that point. And I also want to say on that point, I think Brady is going to tie, if not go ahead, mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. get six or seven yeah. Super Bowls. I think that's... Took and the word then I will say, if he does do that, if he gets seven, mm -hmm. then he'll walk away from the game. Yeah. I think that he's going to play personally until he's 45 years old. <laughs> he's 39 now. He will enter next season at age 40. Yep. If he is continuing to tell everybody that he is as healthy as he's ever been, he is in the best shape he's ever been, he's playing his best football he's ever done, He's having fun. He yeah. enjoys what he's doing. Why can't he play till he's 45? Mike, what do you think? Mike and I were saying it at the parade uh, yesterday. We were thinking, we said, yeah, one or, one or two more. But the thing I kind of see coming in the future is I think Tom Brady loves the game so much, and Bill Belichick loves winning so much. I could unfortunately see a potential scenario where Tom Brady is playing for another team okay. for his last Oof. couple of years. Because I think he wants to play literally until he cannot play anymore, and which could mean he, he starts to deteriorate. And I can see Bill Belichick being like, Tom, like, you don't have it anymore. If you want to play, you're going to have to go somewhere so else. So you think Belichick will outlast Brady? Yes. Okay. What do you feel? I, I disagree. Okay. I think, I think Belichick and – well, you know, I think one of them may outlast each other, but I don't think Brady's moving anywhere. Okay. I, I really don't. I think that – he says he wants to play until he's terrible. Yep. I think there was rumors he'll sign a three- to five-year extension. Yep. 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 And I think he'll, he might go for the five-year. I think he will. And I think he'll be, I I think he'll be good. And, yep. and I think he'll walk away from the game as a, still a good player. But. I, I, I like your point. Yeah. I do. I like that point a lot because it's, it's 
not the traditional thing that yep. a lot of people would say. I think that that's something that I would not be surprised that happens. Mm -hmm. But I want to say that because of what I've heard so much from Brady about him being the team guy that he wants to play until he's successful, yep. continuing to go out yep. year by year, I do think that he would walk away with his head held up high yeah. after I hope winning so. I hope a, a championship and all. And I think he'll do that yeah. because I think so too. Giselle will have something to say something about <laughs> yeah. that too. Yeah. Now, she's already told him many times from this year, it's time to retire. Yeah, let's it's wrap time it to up. step away. Let's wrap Said it up. Too much fun. And he told her, go pound rocks, honey. Yeah. <laughs> You're done. And you know he's not, he's not doing that for go attention. Go sell some dresses. <laughs> <laughs> he's not telling us that he feels as healthy as ever for attention and stuff. No. Like, yeah. I truly believe what oh, he's I believe saying. Oh, I believe him 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I think that what he's been able to do, if other people and other athletes don't try to emulate exactly the formula and exactly the things that he does mm -hmm. as a professional athlete to outlast yeah. in this game. Why even bother playing? Yeah. Just why? Like Aaron Rodgers, Andrew Luck, yeah. Ben Roethlisberger. You're seeing it right in front of your eyes. If you yeah. want to continue to play and be one of the greatest, follow the example. Yeah. Why don't other athletes, teams, and everybody else follow the model? Tom the Brady. Patriots are yeah. telling teams, here it is, <laughs> follow the model, and they're not doing it. Why? For sure. Tom Brady has said openly he's not a big weightlifting guy. Go out and he get your Under Armour pajamas. Yeah. He'll give them to you. <laughs> I mean, wear. go ahead. He's your telling avocados. you to do it. And they're not doing it. He's pliable. He's saying, he is. He stretches. Yeah. He's, he's lengthening his mus muscles yeah. while other people are lifting their faces yeah, off and they're bulked up. shortening their muscles. And I actually heard, going off of that point, yeah. that... He's try he's gonna try to work with Gronk this off season yeah. on doing that. More stretches. Yeah. Gronk's a huge guy. He doesn't have yeah. to get bigger. Yeah. And Gronk just pounds the weights and stuff. Yeah. And it yeah. that's a big reason to his injury. Do you injury. think with how much Gronk does with lifting wise and stuff is one of the reasons he breaks down so much? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna it's lie. Kind I, of I, think I don't think he takes care of himself as well as he should. I think it's I think been, it's a huge reason. It's okay. been like a, it's kind of a common factor around all of sports, especially in golf nowadays, there's been a lot of injuries with mm -hmm. weightlifting guys. Yeah. Like guys like Tiger Woods, obviously. Yeah. Guys that had to drop out and hasn't played successful in years. He wanted to be he was working the workout of a Navy SEAL. Yeah. Trying to just trying to get jacked and they're shortening their muscles and they can view the way they're working, these professional athletes, the way that they're working their body day in and day out, like they can't take it. They need to be able to stretch and have long muscles like Tom Brady does. That's why he's yeah. so successful. It's just amazing that the uh, the Patriots could give, could give you a playbook and tell you, here, here you go. This is how we do things here, the New England Patriot way. And the rest of the NFL doesn't want to listen. Mm -hmm. They got the formula right in front of them. They're so stubborn. Yeah. Like, if you can't beat us, try and be like us. Yeah. But, nobody, but here's the thing. Nobody could be like them. Yeah. They couldn't. They couldn't. No. They don't have the coach. They don't have Tom. They don't have the people that are there to put it all together. It's yeah. only a one organizational philosophy, and that's the Patriots, and yeah. it will never change, mm -hmm. in my opinion. One of my favorite things that Bill Belichick does, and one of the biggest reasons I think he's so successful, is that he puts winning above his like, relationships with players. Yeah. He, could, he could have a great relationship with a player, but if that player starts to stink or that player gets in trouble off the field, see ya. He does it with, you're not he, playing, he does it with his sure. girlfriends, too, yeah. just so you know. <laughs> he's, cut, he's cut players right yeah. the, literally yeah. the week the before holiday. Super Bowls. <laughs> See Go ya. away. If you're not going to do what you got to do, you're done. <laughs> just like what, what, was, what Liam was just saying uh, about Bill, one of the reasons I think they're so good is because he doesn't let the players' past or their current ego or any of their accomplishments mm -hmm. really go into what he sees in them. Yep. You see him bringing in some pretty good players from yep. previous years, and if they're not doing their thing in the Pats organization, he lets them go. Yeah, Reggie Wayne from the Colts, try, he tried out for the Pats a couple years how ago. How about we look he at said this it was too intense. Point. That's a great point right yep. there. Chandler Jones? Chandler Jones. Jamie yeah. Collins. Yeah. See you. Yeah, how have, you guys doing? Have fun on the how Browns. How you guys doing? Have fun on the Browns, Jamie Collins. How <laughs> the Browns doing there, buddy? <laughs> Enjoy, you know enjoy, enjoy losing. <laughs> you know what? We're fine. We're fine still. Yeah. Imagine that. They trade one of their best players. Oh, we'll take Trey Flowers. You want to get some sacks, yeah. Trey? You can hop in. We'll that. take Chris Long. Yeah. All that stuff. They buy into the system, and that's what makes it so special. Another mm -hmm. guy to add on to it is Chris Hogan. Yeah. 
Buffalo Brady. Bills didn't want him. Yep. They thought he was done. Couldn't work here. Yep. Couldn't work there, excuse me. Comes here to New England. <laughs> sure, Brady likes him. <laughs> you want to be successful? I'll show yeah. you how to be successful. Yeah. Just buy him. Cross player. People forget that. Yep. Four years of lacrosse at Penn State. Oh, we also got like Nate e Nate, um, Nate Ebner playing Ebner rugby. Going Olympics. to play uh, Olympic rugby. Yeah. I mean, talk about a group of guys that's just, they're all in. They grind. They grind. Do your job, no days off. Yep. That's all it comes down to. That's all it comes down to. <laughs> so let's look at the future here. We've got some players that are up for free agency. We've got to think about, we talked about Tom Brady. I personally think he's going to play another five years, and we'll see yep. what happens from there. Um, Belichick is 64 years old. Let's talk about this first. He's got five Super Bowls right now. Could walk away as the greatest coach that's ever coached in the NFL. Yep. How long does he go? I think he goes as long as Brady does. I do. Okay. I think him and Brady leave together. Yep. And I think, I agree with you, I think Brady's anywhere between four to five years realistically. I think that can really happen. Yep. I think Belichick is going to go until his health prevents him yep. from coaching anymore. I see him outlasting Brady. I see Brady again, I'd say three to five years, and I've hopefully won to two championships for Brady. Mm -hmm. But I think Belichick, is, this is kind of what makes him tick. I think he's going to go until he, he's literally unable to coach football anymore. Can you see Belichick not coaching and doing something and enjoying it? Go to Nantucket. <laughs> I, I just don't think so. I, I think... I think that when he steps down, yeah. I think he'll still be involved with the organization, yeah. but just a less demanding role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I even think Josh McDaniels could even probably step up and be the head coach yeah. after he leaves. See, now that's an interesting one, and that's something that I can't put my hands around yet, and I'm glad you mentioned it. It's the current staff that's in play right now. Josh McDaniels turned down the 49ers and all the other coaching positions available. Same yeah. with Matt Patricia. The same goes for Dante Scarnecchia. He's back for another season next year as the offensive coordinator, which is great news. That's what you Huge want to hear. You also have Nick Casario, who is the VP player relations and all that. Yeah. He did not take a general manager job or anything else or any other organization. Right. Does that lead us to believe something? Or am I looking into that too much? People, saying, people love to work for the Patriots. I remember a couple weeks ago I saw a quote that said uh, – Bill Belichick is NFL agents' worst nightmares because their players will take less money to work for the Patriots. Yeah. People like Josh McDaniels and Matt Patricia, they could be head coaches. They're taking yeah. less money because the Patriots, the way they run their organization, mm -hmm. is the best organization in the league, and they're yeah. so successful year in and year out. Well, think about it. I mean, let's, let's, let's use uh, the 49ers as an example. Here's a team that has absolutely stunk up the house yep. since Jim Harbaugh left yep. and went to Michigan. McDaniels could have had the key to the city. He yeah. could have given everything there, had his own quarterback, done everything his own system. Yeah. Refused to do that. I think from what the Patriots have done, they first of all, they pay McDaniels well. I think he gets like $2 million, $3 million a season to be the offensive coordinator. Yeah. Heck, I'll <laughs> sign up. Where, do I, where can I sign my I name? Know, I don't know Please. about that. I think we all wanted his gig after the first half in the season of the Super Bowl. <laughs> Same with Patricia, defensive coordinator. He could have gone and... Done oh. something else there. One of the Both of those guys anywhere. Yep. I think the biggest fools are the people that do leave the organization. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's why McDaniels doesn't want to do it, do it twice. Mm -hmm. he, he failed when he went to Denver. He failed when he went to uh, the Rams. Great. And I think he knows that the next spot that he gets is either going to be the Patriots head coach Yep. Or latching on to something else after it's yeah. all said and done. Yeah. Same with Patricia and everybody. They believe in Bill. They trust him. And they know that they're not going to get the same treatment when they get to the, another organization mm -hmm. if they choose it. Um, now, coaching-wise, you brought up McDaniels. You think that he could get the gig as soon as Belichick is up. I think Belichick is going to coach. They say from reports that I've heard till 2019. That'll put him at... Um, he's 64 now, so he would be at about 66, 67 years old. I think that he's going to coach into his 70s. Belichick has come out and said that he doesn't want to be like a Don Shula yeah. or somebody else coaching into his 70s. That's a bunch of crap. Yeah. He's going to coach and do something. There's just I, – I don't – I can't see him sitting here in a chair with his feet up on the table – Hey, can I get something from Linda or something? Just enjoying TV or something. I just don't see it. I don't see it happening. I think that 
he's going to be involved somehow, some way. So I do think that Belichick will outlast Brady. Yeah. Who's going to be the coach, though? You think McDaniels? I, I think McDaniels or Patricia. Okay. Definitely. I hope they keep it in-house. Okay. I think that's because both McDaniels and Patricia have learned so much yeah. from Bill Belichick. They've been around. I'd hate to see them bring in a new guy mm -hmm. and have him you know, restart everything mm -hmm. from scratch. Like Patricia and B McDaniels would be able to continue Bill Belichick's theories of thought. I want you to crank the volume up a little bit. Make sure you hear correctly what I'm about to say because we're going to make a little bit of history here on Face the Facts. Probably going to be the first time you've heard this on any sports talk show, so that's why we continue to do this. We like to think out of the box sometimes. But sometimes it takes a little creativity to think what you have with mm -hmm. your organization. Yes, you could just go with the traditional pick and go with it. Josh McDaniels, Matt Patricia, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going that route. I'm not. Yeah. I do not think Josh McDaniels is the next head coach of the Patriots. I'm going to throw a curveball here. There are two candidates that I strongly would consider being the next coach of the New England Patriots. Actually, I'll change my mind. I have three. I just thought of another one. The first one, which I think is actually pretty realistic to think about it. What do the Patriots have in the coaching staff this year that Belichick really enjoyed for the first time ever? What is that? As soon as the Patriots won the championship, he went over to these two people he hugged them first and congratulated them first. Who are they? His kids. kids. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, He's right. Got Steve oh, yeah. Belichick, True. who was with the, uh, the, the organization on the field for the first time, and his other yeah. son, I forget his other son's name, but his other son is also involved with the coaching yeah. staff and day-to-day -day yeah, yeah. operations. My number one choice, which I wouldn't be surprised with, is Steve Belichick. He could be the next coach of the Patriots. That's a good his dad one. Brains. That is a good one. Yep, that could be a good one. The next one, which I have heard from a couple different people outside of here um, who are pretty close with this particular person, say this guy would not want to go for a trip in the broadcasting booth, like a Troy Aikman, yeah. would not want to just hang it up and go sit under a mango tree in the Bahamas and soak up the sun. Doesn't want to do that. He's not really interested either, this person, in anything outside of really football. Mm -hmm. Who is this person? Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. How cool would that be? How cool would that be? Be wild. He would do it. He would oh, yeah. absolutely do it. For sure. As long as, long as Giselle lets him. As long as yeah. Giselle She's gives it to go. She's going to be the uh, offensive coordinator. <laughs> so there will be two know. things to watch for the Patriots now because of that. <laughs> My next one. And this one is more on the realistic side if they don't want to keep it in-house. There is one candidate. I'm not a big fan of this person. However, he is a big fan of the Patriots. Yep. He has a lot of connections with the Patriots. He's always thought very highly of them. And this coach is in college right now. Jim Harbaugh? It's Harbaugh. I love it. I like Jim Harbaugh. It's Harbaugh. I, I was going to say earlier yep. that if they were to go out of house, yep. I would like, be him. I will gladly accept Jim I'm a big Jim, Jim Harbaugh fan. He's one of, those, one, one of those people that, at least for me, I'm going to use the Brad Marchand example. Yep. You hate the player if he's not a part of your organization. Oh, for sure. Same as the coach. You hate the guy, or not. maybe hate's too strong of a word. Maybe yeah. you dislike that person. He annoys you, something on, like that. On another side of, uh, of an organization. He annoys you. Well, Jim Harbaugh would just be absolutely a breath of fresh air yeah. if they wanted to go down that route. He's another guy. Like, Belichick's a football guy through and through. Jim Harbaugh is a football sure. guy through and through. Yep. Lives, breathes, football. So that, that's, my, um, that's my dark horse. Yep. My number one one I would like to see would probably be Tom Brady. I think yeah. that would be pretty that, sweet. That would be That'd something be. else. Steve Belichick would be pretty cool to keep it in-house from right there. Yeah. And then the number three choice would be Harbaugh. So that's yep. what I would look at from there. You know, you may have me convinced on the Harbaugh thing yeah, rather yeah. than McDaniels or Patricia. I know that I'm was smarter than I mainstream, look, I? but, like, I've always yeah. I've loved Harbaugh. I didn't steal that from anybody either. That was 100% on me. So anybody that mentions Harbaugh or any other network, I am going to be calling in for royalties, and I want my check. So there you go. Yeah, don't sleep on Harbaugh. I yeah. mean, I think, I think he could definitely make his way in. Just yeah. he's just, I love him as a coach. I really do. Football. One of the yeah. things we haven't talked about before we wrap up the show here too is uh, the parade. The yep. parade was yesterday. Mm. A lot of people took work off. 
went yeah. through all the lovely elements of rain, oh. snow, yeah. sleet, cold. Me and Mike were together. Riding a tee. Beautiful. Love it. Not. <laughs> Having to deal with crowds of people that are 40 deep. Yeah, yeah I, I did that too. <laughs> I want to hear what your personal experiences were with the parade, and then I'll share my sad story. <laughs> Well, I was actually with Liam. We were together, oh, aren't you lucky? We were together we, the we, whole day. Um, we had it, we headed in with <laughs> we headed in with about probably a hundred kids. We were kids. rolling probably from the Reading train, it was probably rolling a hundred kids deep and skipping school, hopping on the train. Af yeah, after that, it, it, so many people just dispersed. I ended up with Liam and our friend Ben Fisher. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I know ben. for the whole day. We got nice seats right on uh we were on Tremont Tremont Street, Street. Uh, right in front of like the Boston Common. Got right area. off the Okay. The uh, Park Street exit. Yep, and we were, we waited probably, I'd say what, two, two and a half, three hours to wait for them to come snow, rainy by. mix. It's snowing. It was, when it snowed, it wasn't bad. The when rain it started, was awful. When it the started rain to rain, the I trick. looked at Mike and Ben, I was like, oh, look, this is getting a little, this, this is getting is, a little tough, little, bearing yeah. the weather. I was doing foot fires, trying to stay warm, yep. and cool. then we see the, the uh, duck boat starting to come down the street. So was anybody in front of you when you were watching? Yeah, we had, yeah, we had, okay. we had a couple of rows in front of us. But, but it wasn't had... like where I was, 40 deep. No, no, you no. See, I we, was in front of Suffolk University. We were actually first row on the uh, on the sidewalk, so we had a little elevation. Yeah, we had a ledge. Oh, so that's nice. We were up. It, it was that good. Was nice. What was your biggest takeaways from the parade? What did you like the most? I like... And it's okay, you can say... Uh, Rob Rob uh, Ninkovich drinking the, the Grey Goose. Goose. Yeah. That was pretty cool. That was cool. But you know what I liked? I liked that the vast majority of all the signs and T-shirts and all the propaganda and stuff was yeah. going against Goodell. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, too. Goodell, it was awesome. Goodell was public enemy number one. True. He you really see, was. Danny Amendola was wearing a fire Goodell hat. Yep. <laughs> and they was... had the, uh, the D-backs, I believe, had a... The clown Goodell. Yeah, yeah Patricia came off yeah. the plane yeah. on Monday yeah. the, that had the Goodell as a, yeah. the bozo nose yeah, the clown. clown shirt. Yeah, and I, I, for me, my favorite part was probably to see how united everyone is as a yeah, the passion as, of the a, fans. as a New England sports fan. Mm -hmm. The Patriots, Mike and I and Ben, we were three high school kids. We were talking to, we were we were meshing with everyone around us. We had. Mm -hmm. Three uh, like twenty-something-year-old construction workers from Plymouth. We were talking mm -hmm. to them like we had known them for years, talking about yeah. the Pats yep. and just how it, it brings everyone together. And everyone sees Tom Brady, and they're just like, "Oh my God!" Do you think Tom everybody Brady. was brought together so much because of the suspension from Brady? Yeah, that's definitely. What did it, if it, there wasn't a suspension? If there wasn't anything that was really there, do you think that you know, no deflate gate, take that away? Do you think yeah. that it would have changed the situation? Yeah, I think it would have meant it, it would have meant less. Yeah, if we didn't have the deflate gate because so many people have such built up aggression or oh, yeah. hatred yeah. towards Robert uh, yes. Roger Goodell. Free agency that's coming up now. As Belichick said yesterday at the parade, there are no days off. Yep. So we already no said five, off. Weeks, five behind. weeks behind. We have a lot of free agents, a lot that either are. We're going to finish our segment with a yes or a no on yeah. some of these guys. So there's a listing of a lot of guys that need a contract. Are they welcome back to the party, or are they thrown off the bus? Yep. All right? So the first one we want to look at is LeGarrette Blount. Okay? Here's a guy that, before we do our votes here, we need to think about he had an unbelievable season with the amount of rushing touchdowns that he scored. Yep. I think he set the record. For Pat, the Pat's for, record, yeah. Pat's yeah, record Pat, for Patriots, most yeah. rushing Franchise touchdowns record. in a season. Yep. So, yes, regular season-wise did great. Completely disappeared, whether it was health-related or what. In the playoffs, the one without him, the one without him. So Liam, what is is he um, a? Uh, I would wouldn't mind having him back, but he is definitely not a a must have. Okay. The Patriots have shown time and time again, time and time again, that they are very successful with running back mm -hmm. by committee. They have James White and Deion Lewis, like the three is you can call it a three headed monster if you will. I think they could bring in any other blunt type running back mm -hmm. like a big strong powerful running back maybe one cheaper than what blunt's going to be asking for yep. and it will be just as successful as he is uh, i'm on the same page with liam yep. i except i really i just don't want him at all actually i think that we're going to get it done without him yep. i don't think it's worth it I, I don't i don't want him either i think I, I i saw enough to know that he's just a regular season performer he's a atlanta falcons type player mm -hmm. he does it <laughs> when it's not in the biggest of light so I think that the Patriots would be fine without him. It's Deion Lewis time, James White time, and who knows? Maybe they go and draft somebody. Yeah. 
and yeah. they're installed as the next running back. Yep. They're pretty easily replaced. Yeah. The next one I want to look at, Logan Ryan. Here's somebody that has been a very nice clog in the defense. Yeah. He has added and I think elevated his game big time this year. Is he somebody that you want to look to bring back? Or do you think the Patriots can find uh, luck, catch lightning in a bottle, and find somebody different? Uh, I'm going to go with no on Logan Ryan. Don't really? think we need him back. Okay. Not a, never been a big Logan Ryan supporter. Okay. I don't know what it is. I just... I don't know. I, he doesn't seem to bring as much intensity as I like to at the cornerback. I like having a cornerback who's going to be John with a wide receiver, okay. get in his head, be a physical cornerback. And I've just seen Logan Ryan let up too many big plays over mm -hmm. the years. Okay. I would personally prefer to have him back, but worry about him after we worry about some other things, yeah. other signings. I, I actually have liked Logan Ryan. Yeah. I, I have seen the elevation in his I game. I saw the game get a little elevated with him. Though. Yeah. I, I like him. I personally really do. So if we can make it work out and it's not a huge dent, then go for Belichick it. Belichick needs to put on his GM hat. Same yeah. person in the same kind of positional category as Deron Harmon. Here's a guy that's also up for another contract. Is he in the same Logan Ryan category? Yeah, I would agree. Okay. Just about okay. around there. S similar. I'd say sure. Logan Ryan's a little bit above. Yeah, a little Deron bit above. That, that's what I was thinking. Okay, too. if we're taking Logan Ryan yeah. or Deron, I mean, if we're taking Logan Ryan or Deron Harmon, I'm, yep. I'd prefer to have Logan Ryan. Let's throw a big name here in. A big name. Danny Amendola. Whew. No. I've have never been a I've never been okay. a big Danny Amendola supporter. Either. He's a guy that might not have numbers to show in the regular season, but yeah. when the big stage comes, yeah. boom. He's there. That's definitely true. I've definitely appreciated his performance in the postseason. But when we acquired him from the Rams, I was super excited. I thought, I was like, oh, we got to. He's the next. next he's going to be the next Welker. Wes Welker. Well, yeah, and Welker. I never really saw that panned out, and he's always just kind of been a little bit of a disappointment. It's always Regular hurt, season, too. Well, he is yeah, frequently yeah. hurt. He's, but I guess the postseason kind of justifies it, but I still think we can have a better wide receiver for a similar price to yep. Danny Amendola. Um. I'm going to say no. We've seen how great the Pats are with getting players just like him. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to trust the process with the Pats process of getting these type players. Do you re-sign Chris Hogan? Yes. Yes. That's a yes from me, too. That's I, one I that's, see him. Is he maybe priority, maybe number two? Because we're going to get to one in a minute. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, is he he, number he's two? definitely up there, okay. in my yeah, opinion. I think he's going to get okay. even better, too. I think he's definitely going to get okay. re-signed. All right. I, I am all for Hogan. I thought he was one of my biggest surprises of the season and one of the biggest bright spots of the mm -hmm. year. Okay? The next one, Martellus Bennett, tight end, for the, up for contract. First of all, let's evaluate his season. Did he have a good year? And then is he justified for coming back? I don't think he had that great of a year. Like okay. when I when – him and Gronk were playing together. I thought he was going to be much more productive mm -hmm. than he was because obviously Gronk's going to see a bunch of double teams and whatnot. Yep. So I thought Martellus Bennett would have much more production. Mm -hmm. And I, don't, I like the, the fact that he's a big body tight end. I like the, the body shape he had. I believe he's around 6'6", 275 yeah. or something like that. But I was a little disappointed with the regular season production. I'd like to have him back, though. Okay. If we get him for a cheaper, a cheap or a relatively cheap price. I imagine he's going to ask for a lot. Before, before we go to Mike, just so we know, other tight ends that are available yep. for in the free agency group, we have Jared Cook. Yep. We have Jermaine Gresham. Yep. You have um, Jordan Cameron. Those are your Jordan big Cameron. tight ends that are yep. available right there. From just hearing those names right there, is anybody who sound better than Bennett? Oof. I've always been. I'd like to see uh, Jordan Cameron play with uh, Tom Brady. Because he played with the Browns for a while yeah. and had one, his, I believe his most productive year was yeah. with the Browns. It was. And if he can have his most productive year with the Browns, that I would love to see. Yeah, I think they're going to take a gamble jersey. on Cameron. Unfortunately, he's probably the number one tight end available outside yeah. of Bennett. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see what happens there. What do you think of Bennett? I want him back. You do? <clears throat> and there's a couple of reasons to that. Yeah. One, I love his heart. Okay. And I, love, I, th I, think that, I think that he is very capable of having a big season. Yeah any given year, especially with Brady in this offense. But also, I think that we can get him back, and that op I'm not saying I want this to happen, but I think that it opens up Gronk trade discussion. Okay. 
I think that the big priority here for the Patriots in their offseason, outside of this person we'll talk about in a second, is tight end. The question here is, is Bennett worth the big bucks? I'm saying no. I'm saying no. I think the Patriots are smart enough to know that they should just take a gamble on somebody like a Jordan Cameron, yep. see if he can come back fully healthy. Yep. Kind of the same way they did it with Bennett. Mm -hmm. See if he can go out there and perform and then maybe cash in and go somewhere else. Yep. Um, I think Bennett, in a way, may have worn out his welcome a little bit. He's a little bit too vocal with some of the things yeah, he, he likes is. to say. He's, it's fair. He's not going to the White House to be at the ceremony to induct yeah. the champions. That includes um, McCourty. McCourty and one other person who we'll mention in a minute because yeah. we can't play spoiler. So that's how that, that's my stance on the Bennett front. He played yeah. hurt. I appreciate his effort. I yeah. thought he did a great job being a, a Patriot player. Mm -hmm. But I expected more. I also I can see him being a Darrell Revis type who yeah. he's has he's yeah. been on the Bears. He's never yeah. had much success. And if he's this got was a championship, he's he's ready. He's ready <laughs> to get his uh, he's ready to get the paycheck. The last player we want to For talk sure. about before we wrap this up here is Dante Hightower. Yep. Boy has he just flourished on the big stage. He did it from 2014, and then he did it to change the complete impact and outcome of the game from the Super Bowl. They got rid of Chandler Jones. They got rid of Jamie Collins. It's got to be, got to be Dante Hightower time to mm -hmm. be signed here long term. What do you think? I think so, and I, I want him number one option. Get him signed before anybody else. Yeah, yeah. And to go along with that, I think that if you say that he's not going to be a good sign, I think that you're crazy because yeah. the fans are seeing it, and obviously the front office saw it yeah. with getting rid of those top yeah. defensive players. And... Hightower, as you said, has made huge plays in the Super Bowl, and yep. I just think he's someone that you got to have on a good defense. It's time for people to realize that Dante Hightower can be the center. He can be the focal point. He can be yep. the leader of yep. the Patriots' defense, and I 100% want to have him back next year. Roger that. <laughs> Liam, thank you for being on the show. Glad to be here. Outstanding job for first time. Same with Mike. Outstanding it was a pleasure. job. Red Sox, they're in full swing now. They're going to be, uh, truck day has already been here. So the the uh, actually pitchers and catchers will be reporting in about a week down to um, Fort Myers. Um, it's exciting because now it's kind of in that transition mode. The Bruins are in their lovely mode of firing Claude. Yep. We have the Celtics who still need a superstar. We'll see how they go. They're about at the halfway point for their season, and it's about to be Red Sox time. So next time we see you, we'll be in full swing with. Uh, basically, those three teams we'll be talking about next here on Face the Facts. Congratulations again to the New England Patriots, Super Bowl 51 champions. This is Nick Face for Face the Facts. We will see you again next time. Goodbye.